a topic that has baffled Christians since time immemorial has been the topic of do we choose to be saved or God saves us by his own initiative and action? How we predestined for salvation or we make conscious decisions to follow Jesus Christ. This is where the rubber meets the road among the evangelicals who believe in the authority of the scripture in matters of orthodoxy and praxis. Across the divide, there are two very distinct evangelical positions. I cannot elaborate on Pelagianism. Pelagianism is a position that believes that the effect of sin on humanity was not there. Consequently, man is able on his own initiative to follow God and God's path. In fact, according to them, Jesus was a perfect example for us to follow. He was not the Savior. And according to them, Adam only sinned by showing us a bad example. But there was no effect on his sin on us. All evangelicals ascribe to the fact that inborn depravity and the fallen nature we acquired after the fall of Adam and what is termed as the original sin in systematic theology. And we say that in the original sin, man was totally depraved. depraved. All the faculties of his being were poisoned and tainted by sin. Therefore, all his inclination is towards sin. That's why you will find that the propensity of human beings is towards criminal activities that includes fighting, gossip, stealing, murdering, and that is the natural propensity of man. Inborn depravity is a fact. How evangelicals interpret it is a matter of division. There are two sides. The Calvinists look at sin's effect as total. They have a position that is called total depravity. And Calvinist position can simply be understood with the acronym TULIP. Total depravity, irresistible grace, unconditional, unconditional election, limited atonement, Irresistible grace and perseverance of the saints. Tulip is total depravity, unconditional election, limited atonement, irresistible grace, and the perseverance of the saints. This position is clear that the effect of man was total on all faculties, and the will of a man is enslaved in sin. Therefore, on their own, they cannot choose God. Consequently, since they cannot choose God, it is God's initiative to draw men unto himself as it is written in the Bible. And according to them, the place of the human will is very limited. But it understands the scope and the extent of sin's effect on humanity. Now, the other position is called Wesleyan Arminianism. Wesleyan Arminian position is clear. That though there is total depravity, but man has a free will to choose God. When all these positions, and according to them, salvation is free for everybody. And they make a distinction between foreknowledge and predestination. And according to them, God's election is based on foreknowledge and not predestination. But I want to say that all these positions taken to the extreme, they can lead to disastrous errors. And I want to say when you take Calvinism to its extreme, God becomes the author of sin and man has no responsibility. And even the um, sanctification, man has no place and has no effect or effort in salvation. 
when Wesleyanism is taken to the extreme, the mistake and the heresy there that can be found is that man saves himself by making the right decisions. And it underscores the fact that man is not completely dented by sin, but evidence, history, and biblical knowledge talks on the contrary. Therefore, I want to advocate a middle position that is called Carl Arminians. It takes the best in both positions. We must underscore that there is always God's sovereignty in salvation and human responsibility. I concur with Calvinists that God's sovereignty overrides human responsibility. The Bible says, for those he foreknew, he also predestines. And the Bible says that no one can come to the Father unless they are drawn by him. Whereas the Wesleyans can say that this is prevenient grace, I believe that God is not limited only to prevenient grace. He effectually calls and he draws men unto salvation. And his calling and election is both irrevocable, irrefutable, and irresistible. But I cannot dispute the truth that Wesleyans put across, that man is involved. There is human responsibility in salvation. The Bible says in the book of Acts chapter 13 verses 48, that for though, when the Gentiles had this, they were glad and highly honored. And those appointed for eternal life believed. I want to say without a shadow of doubt that those who are appointed for eternal life believed. They took a step, but they were predestined. And I believe that the two, God's sovereignty versus human responsibility, are, are, are called an antinomy. You cannot have one without the other. The problem with both positions, they take either, they over-magnify God's sovereignty at the expense of human responsibility or human responsibility at the, extent, at the expense of God's sovereignty. I remember the case of William Carey, the father of modern mission. As he was going to India, some extreme high Calvinist of the school of Theodore Beza said, young man, you don't have to go there. If God wants to save the Ethans, he will do it without your help or mine. The truth of the matter is that God is sovereign and he can do it without my influence, effort, or enterprise. That cannot be gainsaid. But the truth of the matter that William Carey affirmed is that God also predestines the means and he uses human agency according to his limitations that enables him to make the decision of sending human beings to preach the good news and from that he redeems human beings mankind and humanity let me continue to say that it is always good in life and salvation to know that there is god's part and human part as a preacher i preach but it's god's part to save people. I should not manipulate people and take God's part and the part of the Holy Spirit to convict, regenerate, and even to draw people to salvation. I should stick to my part that is preaching. Just like a perfect example is in the farm. I should do my part of digging the farm and leave God to do his part of sending the rain. Both are needed. That's why it's called an antinomy. We need to have God's part and human parts. And the two synergize to make salvation possible. Both in regeneration, justification. Justification is entirely God's work where he declares man righteous. But in regeneration, he needs man's cooperation. We need both. And when we do both, God is glorified. And we get the clear picture of salvation. Today, many preachers, some emphasize God's part at the expense of the human part. 
and some will think it's human part and they use gimmicks and strategies and forget God's human part. Therefore, even in studying, we should do both, God's part and our part. And that is the holistic salvation that we teach and preach. Therefore, it is good that we understand the two positions, Wesleyan position and the Calvinist position. And let's know that we should unless the Anglican, as an Anglican theologian, as I conclude, I believe in the via media. In the Anglican church, we take the best of the Wesleyan position, the best of the Armenian position. And the 39 articles of religion, they speak in very clear terms. And in the reading of the both, you cannot conclude that it is whether Wesleyan or Armenian. Both have a commendation in the Anglican Church. Theologians like J.I. Parker, very solid theologian, but he is Calvinistic in position. People like John Stott, very solid theologians, but he might be leaning towards the Wesleyan positions. But in all this, we remain Anglicans. We, are, we have no beef in the fights as the Wesleyans and the Armenians fight. We take the, both, the best from both traditions. As a theologian, my first theological college was in um, Kenya Highlands Bible College. It was deeply Wesleyan Armenian. Later, I went to Reformed Theological College in Uganda. And uh, in Wesleyan, Wiley was our theological textbook. Very Wiley Oates, very theological. One of my tutors gave me a gift. I still hold it. When I went to Uganda, it was purchased from university under Reformed Theological College. Bekov was the book, very Calvinistic. In my master's, I went to a Wesleyan Armenian college, that is African Nazarene University, and they are Wesleyan Armenian. Then later in um, my PhD, I went to Africa International University, which was ecumenical. And I taught in St. Paul's Theological College, and I also taught in a Reformed Theological College. So I have the best of both traditions, and I want to say that all theologies are human enterprise. They are limited, and since they are limited, they do not express the absolute truth of God's word. Therefore, let's not take it as any of these positions as the gospel truth. Let's uphold the scriptures as authoritative in matters of orthodoxy and praxis. And let's take these theological positions with a pinch of salt. May you understand that salvation is God's work through and through. And God is the one who sustains people in salvation. He upholds them by his right hand. But let's know that human beings cooperate in responding to his call and also in sanctification as they exercises the three Christian discipline of prayer, fasting, and uh, giving. And also as they stay in a sanctified life and have disciplines of reading the Bible and devotion. Let's know that there is always God's part and human part in salvation. In the name of God the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit.